The sponsor of today's video is PCBWay. If you have any projects that you want to get done and or assembled, then PCBWay is going to be a great choice. I've been using them for the past couple years and by far one of the best services I've used, whether you're a hobbyist and or professional alike. So definitely check the links down below. In today's video, we're taking a look at an all-new product from SpeedyB, which is called the F7 V2. Now, I haven't been this excited for a flight controller in quite a while, or should I say stack here. And uh, this is really refreshing to see. And let's get to what do I mean by that. First of all, let's take a look at some of the accessories. You obviously get the ESC, which is a 6S45 amp ESC, Beal High 32 to be exact, an F7 flight controller, which has a ton of features. And they also give us some connectors here, one for the ESC and one for the DJI. It's actually ready made for you for the uh, big module. And if you had a Cadex Vista, you obviously cut the wire. We also get a 35 volt, 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor and some metal screws. And the other one, we get a couple rubber grommets, rubber O-rings and some nylon nuts. And we also get an XT60, a pre-made one with 12 gauge wire, which is really, really nice. And the size is pretty proper because the longer they are, they tend to introduce noise into the system. So that's a really nice length right there. So let's talk about these. I'll be noise testing this in the upcoming days. However, what we do see here is it has pretty decent filtration, which is really nice. Now, we don't know how good this is until we actually test it. And we also do see we have two boards here. One is going to be running the logic and the main board is running all of the power delivery which is again, something you always want and is really nice. And this model has proved itself to be pretty reliable. Now, if we look at the connector, we can access everything via pads or by the connector. Not only that, do you see this cutout right here? Now this cutout is, is not by chance, it's not for design. It's actually a functional cutout. And the flight controller also has that same cutout here. Now, why is that? Well, this is in order to help you gain a bit of space because this would be the front of your quadcopter. So your camera uh, would be bending through here or some wires. So this is a kind of like a, an intentional cutout just to give you a bit more space in this area, which is really nice and very well thought through. And uh, I like seeing that it shows the amount of effort they've actually put into designing this. Now, we still haven't even gotten to the best part. Now, the flight controller, to me, is the best part of all. And why is that? Well, one, we have 9-volt regulator. We could run both analog and digital. And we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a barometer. And it runs iNav. And it runs Betaflight and some other ones also. So what is the benefit and why the hell would they put a Bluetooth and the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi on there? Well, the Bluetooth is going to be for basic configuration through the application. And the Wi-Fi gets enabled when you plug in the uh, the LiPo. And what the Wi-Fi will enable you to do is basically flash it, also read your black box logs, which is which has never been done before, which is pretty crazy. Um, and 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 that those in alone are just very useful for a lot of people out there. I know for myself, this should be the all new standard for all flight controls from now on. So we can officially say SpeedyB is trying to innovate. Obviously, they've released the SpeedyB app and. Uh, they're actually trying to make this proper and uh, this is looking really really good so far Now if you flip the flight controller over like I mentioned earlier We could run both analog and digital and the reason for that is because we do have an on-screen display for the analog setup And at the same time we could take full advantage of that 9 volt regulator on board So this thing has a 9 volt barometer Wi-Fi Bluetooth black box logging USB type C just about everything, a barometer. Uh, I don't think there's anything missing here and uh, maybe just like a dual camera switcher and, and that's about it really. We have enough UARTs to do just about everything we need. And again, it's an F7, so we don't really have to worry about where the S bus goes if you're still rocking an S bus receiver here. Now the overall layout is decent, it's pretty nice, but uh, you know, you can only fit so much in here. And the way this is supposed to be installed into your quadcopter is actually like this. We have the arrow pointing forward here. And we can take a look at what we have in the front. We have the video up top, the top three right there, which would be the camera. If you're running analog, that is. You have your ground. You have your 5 volt ground and video input here. So those three right there would be for your camera. And if we take a look at the backside just really quickly, let's see if our video output would be. And they've already prepared the 9 volt regulator. If you're running analog, you see 9 volt ground video output. This is where you'd want to install your analog video transmitter. And you could take full advantage of the T2 right here, possibly. So it'd be for something like smart audio or IRC tramp protocol here. And here we have our SDA and SCL. These are for GPSs or compasses. So if you wanted to go that route, you could easily do that. They have those broken out for you. And if for some reason you wanted battery voltage, you could easily access it from this pad right here. We have our LED section right there and uh, a buzzer section right here. Another 5 volt in ground if you wanted to do something there. 
Here again, we have a five volt in ground, uh, probably GPS area, I'd probably stick it there. So this section right here can be used for your VTX. And not only that, it could also be used for your DJI or HD setup um, without the remote. If you had the remote, you're going to have to go up here for your receiver, but you really don't have to. You could actually go anywhere else. If that's open, you could go like to R6 right here. So you could keep all your wires in one area. Now, if we take a look at the front, this is the receiver section. So it's going to be up in this top corner right here. Ground, 5 volt, R1 and T1. So R1 is going to be for the receiver, 4.5 volts or 4, 4V5. Uh, this is going to allow the receiver to power up via USB connection. And the reason why it's a slight lower voltage is because there's a diode between the main 5 volt and the USB 5 volt, and there's voltage drop, and that's why they call them 4.5 volts. Now, so far, this is the most feature-packed flight controller and convenient flight controller I have ever seen. So it should make uh, setting up an absolute breeze, especially for beginners and even veterans out there, uh, especially when, you, when you're when you constantly checking that black box log instead of having to land, take the SD card out or wait for that thing to download. Uh, you'll be able to do it over Wi-Fi, which, uh, which is going to save you a lot of time and, and headache. And it's just going to be overall very convenient and a pleasure to use. I could already imagine it in the field in the spring. And well, that's really it guys. So just wait for the ESC noise testing and everything's linked down below. If you can check those out, those greatly support the channel guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.